Okay, so bridge collapses, uh, when we look at the statistics over the last 50 years, and there's a lot of statistics available on bridge collapses, they show that it normally occurs uh, once the bridge is in service. However, it's interesting to note in the last couple of years that that trend has been somewhat reversed. And in the last couple of years, more than half of the bridge collapses that have occurred have occurred during construction. So uh, what's been found is that often that's, uh, in fact more often than not, failure during construction is design related and specifically it's related to uh, deficiencies in the design of the temporary works for the bridge. And by temporary works uh, for bridge construction I'm referring to essentially those elements that are required for the construction of the bridge but they're temporary, they're removed once the bridge construction is complete. And this could be excavation support, temporary piers, uh, methods of launching, launching nose, uh, pier support, formwork support, etc. So uh, the reasons are essentially that first of all, there's not the same level of scrutiny which is applied to uh, temporary works designs as there is to permanent works designs. So for a given design organisation they would do a design and that would be reviewed uh, normally in-house. For permanent works designs invariably there's also an external reviewer which is often another company that would review the design and there's also often a proof engineer. Uh, those situations don't exist for temporary works designs. In addition safety factors invariably are lower for temporary works designs. And given the statistics on failure, it could be argued that those safety factors might be a little bit too low. If you've got a low factor of safety and the unexpected uh, happens, then you don't have the same uh, margin of safety uh, to, to deal with that. Uh, in addition, codes and standards are invariably written around permanent works designs, not temporary works designs.